Life Audio. Faith Over Fear is brought to you by Life Audio and is part of our Faith Toolkit series. For more inspirational, faith-affirming podcasts, visit us at lifeaudio.com. And welcome to the Faith Over Fear podcast, where we attack our most pervasive fears with truth because life's too short for any of us to live enslaved. I'm Jody Bailey, and at Faith Over Fear, we're passionate about helping God's children live in freedom. We'd love to connect with you online or on social media. Just visit our show notes to learn how to connect with us. Hello, I'm Adam Comer. And I'm Ryan Chittister. And we are the host of Life After Addiction Podcast. What we believe is that addiction is not a surprise to God. That's right. We discuss addiction from a biblical worldview and how true freedom comes through a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Absolute freedom from addiction. The secular worldview of once an addict, always an addict is just not true. If you or someone you love struggles with addiction, subscribe to Life After Addiction at lifeaudio.com. Today, we're continuing our series in Genesis. Have you ever prayed about something and followed God's leading only to run into trouble and trial, even though you were obedient? If that's happened to you, it probably left you either questioning whether you heard right, or it left you questioning whether God truly knows what he's doing. I've been there, and here's what I learned. Sometimes we're going to get everything right. Sometimes we're going to start out in the right direction and then take a detour of our own choosing. And sometimes we're going to get it all wrong. Sometimes, at least for me, Fear plays a huge part in that equation. I start to believe I've heard God incorrectly or that I've even gone rogue on my own. I start second guessing. I start making plans of my own to try to fix it. And that's when I wind up where I wasn't meant to be. Know what? It's part of being human. But do you know what else? When we take those detours, our failures do not disqualify us from God's promises. He doesn't give up on us. Stephen Cole says, in spite of our failures, God is always faithful. Our eyes might stray from God, but his never stray from us. I've walked that road. Growing up, there were two great loves in my life, teaching and writing. I played school and I wrote stories. I taught Sunday school as soon as my church would let me, and I made up cute little modern day fairy tales for my friends, usually starring their celebrity crush at the time. Teaching and writing were both innate in me. The short version of the story, though, is I knew early on that teaching could be a career path But I always thought of writing as being one of those impossible daydreams, kind of like when you say, I want to be a rock star. Fun to think about, maybe a nice hobby, but nothing that would ever be a career. So I became a middle school teacher. I loved almost every minute of my time in the classroom. I loved my kids. I loved my friendships with my coworkers. For 11 full-time years, I had the privilege of teaching some of the greatest kids in the world. In short, at that time in my life, it was the job for me. It was exactly where I was supposed to be. But, you know, writing never left me, and eventually, God allowed me to sell a book. Then another. For a time after that, I tried to be both a writer and a teacher, but I found that the amount of creativity required for both meant I was doing neither of those jobs with any kind of excellence. A series of incredible incidents occurred where God made it very clear that he wanted me to write full-time. It's a long story for another time, but when I say God made it clear... He made it unbelievably, incredibly clear. Blue sky on a cloudless day clear. No doubt. No way to question it. So at the end of that school year, I packed up my things and I left full-time teaching for full-time writing. Although I did stick around to teach one class a year. As it turned out, nobody really wanted to be the yearbook advisor. And I really still wanted to stay with my kids. God immediately provided me with a three-book contract. Then another... And another, every step of the way, he clarified that my job was putting his words on paper. And yet every fall, I'd eye the school supply sales and wonder, was I really doing the right thing? I mean, I missed the classroom. I missed the kids. I missed the camaraderie with other teachers. I mean, let's face it. Writing is a solitary job. You sit in your office all day by yourself talking to imaginary people. (laughs) In May of 2018, God let me know something so clearly that I wrote it in my journal. He was about to do something different with my writing career. Something big. Was I ready? Would I jump into the unknown with him? Yes, I was. My prayer journal from that season is full of notes about my writing career and God's direction for my life. 
I was, in short, in his promised land. In August of that year, my daughter's school, where I'd formerly taught, needed a sixth grade teacher. Y'all, middle school is my jam. I love that age. They were a week away from school starting, and they were in desperate need. Surely God wanted me to jump in, right? And it would really help us financially if I took on a more stable job, which is a responsible thing to do, right? Surely I'd heard God wrong about the writing thing, because it simply made good sense in every way to take the teaching job. I didn't even ask him. It made so much sense. On the surface, full-time teaching looked like the right thing to do. So what did I do? I dove in. Classroom, here I come. I can write and teach at the same time, right? Um, wrong. I forgot that my brain doesn't work that way. I can focus on books or I can focus on teaching. My writing career stalled. Opportunities whipped past me. And as I was sitting in a teacher's conference one day, God made it super clear to me. You're in the wrong place. And what could only have been orchestrated by God, I got up in shock and walked out of a room filled with over a thousand teachers into the lobby only to run into one of my closest teacher friends from another school. She grabbed me, prayed with me, and I went to my principal that day. I told her I'd finished the year because I'd never abandoned my kids, but I had definitely landed in the wrong place. God is good. He's even good when we get it wrong. He will even use our missteps for his glory, and he certainly did during that school year. I loved my kids. We had a great time together. I had the opportunity to pray with them and watch them grow. I made good friends, but it was not God's best for me. And as soon as I walked away, God's blessings poured in. More contracts, more books, more opportunities, including this one that allows me to be on this podcast talking to you today. Remember what I said earlier? I took my eyes off the Lord, but the Lord never took his eyes off of me. I was so scared I'd heard him wrong that I convinced myself I had. But still, my detour didn't derail God's plan for me. Let's look at one of Abraham's stories in Genesis and see how he started off headed in the right direction, then took a detour of his own making. Even though he got it right, then got it wrong, God never changed his plan. In our last podcast, we talked about how God called Abraham to leave everything he knew and to journey on until God told him to stop. He ended up in Canaan, also known as the Promised Land. If you missed that episode, the link is in the show notes. Now, in Genesis 12, 9 through 20, we find Abraham has been obedient, but he's also run into a little bit of trouble. Verse 10 of Genesis 12 says, Now, there was a famine in the land, and Abram went down to Egypt to live there for a while because the famine was severe. Let's pause here for a minute. Following God doesn't guarantee an easy road. Abraham reached the promised land, and boom, famine. I followed God when he led me to be an author, but let me tell you, having spent my days with children and other teachers for over a decade before I went to full-time writing, I was lonely. And let's get real. Writing doesn't bring the kind of financial stability that teaching does. Not even close. Just like Abraham, following God did not guarantee me an easy road. You ever heard somebody say, not every good idea is a God idea? Well, y'all, here's where the truth got me. I looked at humans that year I went back to teaching instead of God. I saw that my daughter's school had a need and decided that I was the only one who could fill it. I looked at our finances and saw that although we were doing fine and God had provided for us, a steady paycheck would be a great thing. I didn't consider that God had taken care of the school without me in the past, and he had taken care of my family all along. We had never wanted for anything. I took the trusting myself approach instead of the trusting God approach. I had a good idea on human terms, but it certainly was not God's. Here's something a friend recently said to me. When you don't know what to do, keep doing the last thing God told you to do. God never breathed a word to me about going back into the classroom. In fact, remember my journals filled with all the stuff about my writing? He had told me exactly the opposite over and over. Chances are he already had a teacher waiting in the wings. He was going to take care of it. What did Abraham do? He went to Egypt. We don't have a record of God telling Abraham to do that. Maybe he did. But given what happens next and Abraham's track record moving forward, chances are Abraham came up with that idea himself. Abraham looked at the famine in the land that God had called him to and ran to food in Egypt. 
He looked at his gorgeous wife and then at the Pharaoh and decided he might be in big trouble. In verses 12 through 13, he tells his wife, Sarah, when the Egyptians see you, they will say, this is his wife. Then they will kill me, but will let you live. Say you're my sister so that I will be treated well for your sake and my life will be spared because of you. This second decision to trust in himself instead of God led to what could have been some seriously bad consequences. Let's give Abraham the benefit of the doubt, though. Maybe he remembered what God had said about living in the promised land and having a lot of descendants. And maybe he was just trying to help God keep him and Sarah safe. That decision put the whole descendants thing in jeopardy, though. Had God not intervened, Sarah could have ended up bearing Pharaoh's descendants. But God did get involved. He made Pharaoh aware of the married woman in his harem. Pharaoh wasn't at all happy about the deception or the wrath of God that fell on his household in the process, but he made it right and sent Sarah and Abraham back on their way. Oh, and he blessed them when they did. Hi, I'm Catherine Calabeo, host of the Sparkle Speak podcast. Every week, I interview inspiring and encouraging women who share stories of faith. To start listening now, go to lifeaudio.com. Luke 12, 4 and 5 tells us that the fear of man is a snare. Abraham fell into that snare. I fell into that snare. We all fall into that snare. It's so easy to look at how much money we have in our pocket or at all the chaos in the world and start to worry. We look at problems and we turn inward instead of turning Godward. Frankly, I saw a problem at school and I turned Jody word instead of Godward. I forgot the dozens of calls and promises written in my prayer journal, the ones God had given to me. Abraham saw a problem and turned to himself instead of God. He tried to fix the famine by going to Egypt. He tried to protect himself and his wife by manipulation. Abraham seems to have forgotten the promise God had to make him a great nation. That would mean God would need to keep him and Sarah safe and alive, and Abraham failed to trust in that. But remember what we said earlier? Abraham's eyes strayed from God, but God's never strayed from him. Abraham made a mistake here and there. He flat out sinned here and there. And in future chapters, we're going to watch him make this same mistake again on top of others. But his failures didn't affect God's promises. He didn't throw his hands in the air and stalk away from Abraham. He walked with Abraham even in his sins and detours. Walter Kaiser said in reference to Abraham and his early descendants, in spite of all their blundering, lying and mismanagement, they were still the means through which God was going to bless the world. Can we stop right here? I want to make sure you hear that because it doesn't just apply to the people we read about in the Bible. It applies to me and you as well. Hear me say this. We are going to mess up. We are going to get it wrong. Guess what? We already have. And listen, I know someone out there is thinking they've messed up so badly that God can't use them at all. That is simply not true. You aren't bigger than God. You can't derail his plan for you. He's waiting for you to hand over those detours and sins to him. He'll use them. I know he will. Just like he still used Abraham. Just like he uses me. Because get this. The only place we read about Abraham's failure is in the Old Testament. When we get to the New Testament, Hebrews 11, 8 through 12 commends Abraham for his faith. There's no mention of his multiple failures. Why? Because God redeemed those failures and still used Abraham and Sarah for his plan and his glory. Abraham still became the beginning of the promised nation of Israel, is still an ancestor of the Messiah, and he's often referred to as the father of our faith. We've all failed, but if we turn our failures over to God, he gives us a new start. If we confess our sins to Jesus Christ and accept his redemption and salvation, we belong to him, and he continues to lead us down his path for our lives. He still calls us his children. Will we mess up again? Yep, over and over. But will he welcome us back? Yes, over and over. So if you're feeling like you've detoured off of God's path for your life, or maybe like you never stepped onto that road in the first place, stop now and consider the God who gave mercy to Abraham and to so many others in the Bible and throughout history. He loves you just as much, and that same mercy is available to you. Would you pray with me? Father God, you are full of love and grace and mercy, and you have given us your word and the stories in your word to show us how much you love us and long for us to come to you. Sometimes we try to handle things on our own instead of trusting you. Sometimes we take a detour away from what you've called us to do. Sometimes we even choose to ignore you and do our own thing. Forgive us, Lord. Thank you that your love for us never stops, that you never give up on us. 
that you never take your eyes off of us, even when we take our eyes off of you. Help us to stop where we are and to turn to you so that we can see where you want us to go. Help us to see your path so that if we are off of it, we can find our way back. Thank you for making a way in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for listening. I hope this episode will help us all to rest in God's grace and mercy and to remember that He loves us, even when we stumble and fall and sin. Remember, He is faithful to meet us right where we are, even if where we are is somewhere He never planned for us to go. If you have not already done so, we encourage you to subscribe to this podcast, then you won't miss a single episode. Please share it with others on social media. We'd be encouraged if you would rate it as well. That helps others find it too. Until next time, may you live with the courage of one who has truly been set free. Faith Over Fear is a production of Life Audio and Salem Media. If you liked what you heard today, please take a second to rate and review this podcast in your favorite podcast app so that more listeners like you can find the show. For more faith-filled, inspirational podcasts, visit us at lifeaudio.com. Hey there, it's Nicole Eunice, host of the How to Study the Bible podcast, where every single week we join together to encounter God through His Word. You can subscribe at lifeaudio.com.